Good evening. It's Saturday night, and it's uh, September the 24th, and it's actually day 24 of our 30-day prayer challenge. And so I just wanted to do, uh, basically, I'm going to cover this video. I'm going to cover Saturday evening, if you're getting this Saturday evening, uh, also for Sunday. And so I want to talk to you at first out of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. You know, today we're praying about, pray that you would be able to hear the voice of God in your prayer time. You know, Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, and a voice of another they will not follow. And so it's important that we hear the voice of God, that we cannot quit until we learn to hear his voice. But I like what Paul says here, and this is the scripture for the day, is Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. And Paul said, I pray that the eyes of your, of your heart may be enlightened, so that you will know what is the hope of his calling, and what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. And so this important to understand that we need to learn to hear the voice of God. As children of God, we must learn to hear the voice of God. And so if we love him, we need to learn to hear his voice. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. They will hear my voice. They will know my voice. And so we need to learn to hear the voice of God and to know that voice, not the voice of our flesh, not the voice of those around us, as much as we need to know the voice of God. Listen, God will, if we'll follow him and we'll listen to him, it will save us agony, it will save us death, it will save us brokenness, it will save us all kinds of things. Now, we may go through difficult times in our lives, but it will not dominate us. And so Paul's praying here. This is what he's saying in Ephesians. He said, I pray, and he's praying for the Ephesian church, that the eyes of uh, your heart may be enlightened. That's what we need. We need to be enlightened. We need to learn to hear the voice of God. So I want to challenge you. You cannot go through this life. I'm appealing to you. Pray on your own. Seek God. Even when it seems like it's falling on deaf ears, God hears you. It's only a feeling. It's only you that feels like God's not listening, but he is listening. The Bible says that the prayers of a righteous man availeth much. That means God It gets to God. If we'll pray, we'll seek him, then we will... Uh, he'll hear our, our, our he'll hear from heaven and he will answer us. But the thing is, you have to ask. Now, when God answers, sometimes he's going to tell us what we need to correct in our life. Instead of getting mad at God, we're the messenger. Correct what it is in your life that needs to be corrected. You can get mad at somebody. You know, when I as a pastor, I I preach the word, and people want to get mad at me about things that I say from the word of God. But really, they're not mad at me. They're mad at God. And so, do we love our loved ones more than we love God? Jesus said if we can't, that cannot be so. Do we love ourselves more than we love God? Jesus said that cannot be so. We must love Him first and foremost. And so, I want to challenge you today, learn to hear the voice of God. Now, I, you know, going into Sunday morning, some of you may be getting this on Sunday morning, and, and that's okay. You can still, today, you can pray duly. If you missed uh, on Saturday, which is today, uh, maybe yesterday by the time you're listening to this, if that's the case, then spend some time praying about what it is today that, you know, on Saturday, this praying that we'll hear the voice of God. We need to learn to hear his voice. And so ask God to help you. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. So ask and he will make sure you learn to hear his voice. Now, it says here in the, on, for Sunday the 25th, pray for a heart of obedience to do the things God has called you to do. Now, it's one thing to say you love God, but it's another thing to obey Him. Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. So we should not talk so much about how much we love Him as much as we should show how much we love Him. And the reason, the way we show how much we love Him is by obeying Him. And the, the obedient child is the one that loves the most. And so it says here in 1 Samuel 15, verse 22, Samuel said, has the Lord as much delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to heed than the fat of rams. So see, Saul was king and he disobeyed God. And he said, oh, I, did, I didn't obey and slaughter all these animals like I was supposed to because I was going to make a sacrifice to the Lord, a great sacrifice. And really, God wasn't interested in the sacrifice. He was interested in obedience. As a result, Saul eventually lost his kingship because of his disobedience. God does not, he does not function with disobedience. It's important as followers of Jesus that you understand this. There are people in this world who think that 
God's going to bless them even when they're disobedient. And I'm going to hear, I'm here to tell you that is a lie from the pit of hell. If you don't obey, you will not be blessed. And if you experience any blessing in this life, it's just because Babylon, you know, this Babylonian system, you did well in it. But I'm telling you that in order to receive the blessings of the Lord, obedience is first and foremost. And, you know, you can look at God as a hard taskmaster, but he's not. He's a loving God. And the reason he gives the commands that he gives is because that's what's best for us. It's just like your children don't always want to obey you. If you have kids, you'll understand this. Sometimes kids don't want to obey you, but you're looking out for their best interest. It may not, in their mind, be the most fun thing at the moment, but in the long run, it's a lot more fun to be in the blessing than it is to be in the tragedy. It is to be in, the, uh, in death, in disease, and in sickness with no hope. So listen, I'm here to encourage you today. Obey. It's better. And don't, don't disobey and think you're going to do a great sacrifice for God because God's not interested in that. God would much rather have you obey every day than some big sacrifice along the way. That's why it's better to tithe every time than some big offering once in a while. God's not interested in your big offering until you've obeyed in the tithe. So listen, get just do the basics. If everybody just obeyed, we would be this world would be changed already. But the problem is, is we don't obey because we, it doesn't line up with what we want for our lives. Then the question is, must be asked, is Jesus really the Lord of our life if we don't obey him? See, if Lord means the owner of real property. So if Jesus is the owner of me, then why would I, 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 I say he's my Lord, but if I don't obey him, then I'm just, it's mere words. So we don't want to be people of mere words. We want to be people of action. And so listen, today we need to pray that God gives us a heart to obey, helps us to overcome our flesh. But I will tell you what the last fruit of the Spirit, there's nine different fruits of the Spirit. The last one is self-control. So many times we want to blame things on the devil, but what it really is, is we lack self-control. You have control over your body. You know, it's like someone who says, oh, I can quit smoking whenever I want. And all they do is keep smoking. Well, no, you don't have control. You know it's bad. It's a waste of money. And yet you spend money on it. So you're not in control. It's just like the drug addict who says, oh, I can stop taking these drugs whenever I want. I just don't really want to. The problem is, is that they, they don't really have control. And so, so many times in life with sin, any kind of sin, maybe it's lying, maybe it's uh, cheating, you know, maybe you're cheating on your taxes. I don't know. You know, but if you're cheating, you're lying, you're doing things. I mean, you say you're in control and you can stop whenever you want, but can you? Because if you can, then stop and live your life for God. So listen, I want to challenge you. God wants obedient followers of Jesus. That's what he's after. People who are going to willingly obedient, uh, be willingly uh, and ob willing and obedient. And it says those who are willing and obedient, they'll eat of the fat of the land. That's what we want to be. So listen, I want to encourage you. You can do it. I love you. God bless you. Today's Sunday. If you're up, you need to be in church. Come and see us if you're in town. I want to encourage you. Uh, in fact, next Sunday, October the 2nd, we're going to two services. And we have run out of room and we need to make more room. So we have a service at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. And I want to encourage you to come and be a part of what's going on at Faith for All Nations Church if you live in the area. If you already have a good local church, then stay there. We just, we're appealing to those who aren't really going to church and those who come to Faith for All Nations Church. Come. We look forward to it. We're going to have a celebration between the services. Uh, and so I'm excited about it, what God is doing. We're here to reach more souls and make disciples. Our mission is the Great Commission. We love you. God bless you in Jesus' name.